Welcome to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today I have a very special show planned. I have a special guest. Her name is Robin Silver. She's an accomplished software engineer. She recently graduated with her master's in computer science from the prestigious George Washington University. She has mentored people all over the world looking to get into computer programming and this includes computer science students as well as people who haven't even begun their journey yet. She's gained a lot of very helpful insight so if you are looking to get into computer programming whether or not you've started your journey you're definitely going to want to hear what she has to say. Do you have to be good at math? to study computer programming. You have to be good at math to study computer science, although it definitely can help. But I do recommend taking a course such as Intro to Logic before you take computer science courses. And also you might want to consider taking a course such as Discrete Math before you take a course such as Algorithms. You're really going to need some skills such as understanding recurrence relations and proofs before you get into some of those really high level computer science topics. Which is a better major, computer science or software engineering? So some universities offer software engineering and computer science as two separate fields in two separate departments. And if that's the case, great. Neither is really better than the other. Computer science is a broad field that covers both theoretical and applied topics, whereas software engineering is going to focus more on the applied side of things. And um, if you're really not sure which one to choose, if those two are options, I recommend choosing the one that has its uh, that offers the most courses in its curriculum that you're going to be interested in. So you want to look up the core requirements for the two majors and figure out if one has more interesting courses than the other. And if you're still not sure, here's the best thing you could do really for any major to decide which to study is to look up your school's schedule of classes, go to the website for that, and see who's teaching each of the courses in your curriculum. So go through and look at all the professors and write them down per the majors you're interested in. Then what you want to do is go to ratemyprofessor.com and you want to look up what the ratings are for each of these professors. And if one major has a higher percentage of highly rated professors over the other, you really want to study that major because ultimately the quality of education that you receive is going to come down to how good the quality of education uh, is by the teachers. So you want to make sure that the majority of teachers or professors that are teaching your courses are good at teaching. My school also did not offer software engineering as a separate major. We had computer science and there were different tracks in there and you could focus on software engineering but it wasn't a separate major. So um, it it really uh, you know it depends on on your school and what you're interested in. Yeah, that's the number one thing, write code. Write code. Anyone should be able to code. If you're studying English, you're studying history, whatever it is, you should know how to code in this day and age. You need to have those skills. Will Colton replace Java in Android development? I just went to an Android oh, meetup. How was it? It was good. No, Java won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, yes, Android does now provide support for Kotlin. However, Java is still the official language of Android, so um, all of its libraries are written in Java, so you really aren't going to see it going anywhere in terms of Android development anytime soon. Plus, keep in mind that uh, Kotlin is interoperable with Java, so you know you have your project, you have Java in your project, you can also have Kotlin in your project. They're going to work together. So. Um, it's still very useful and keep in mind that a lot of employers hire people to program in Java because uh, enterprise application development as well as some web development uh, is in Java. So the demand is still there. It's still one of the most popular languages and no, you're not wasting time learning Java. Learning programming can be hard. What can I do to stay motivated? First, the job opportunities for programmers are endless. 
and that can be really motivating. I know it can feel like you have a ways to go if you're just starting out and it can be really overwhelming, but the important thing is to have a clear path as to how you're going to go about learning all of the material, such as starting with the first video in a YouTube tutorial series. When I was in school, I would remind myself things such as the fact that every topic in computer science is cumulative. So what that means is, as you proceed throughout the lessons, the the successive topics are going to be built off of those prior topics that you learned first. Um, so here's what that means if you want to be successful while you're learning, is each time you're studying a new topic, you need to ask yourself, do I really understand what I just learned? And you probably want to go and try your hand at some practice problems or try programming the actual um, topic you just learned by, uh, you know, using that example. And if you can't demonstrate that understanding of that topic, you need to go back over it. You uh, have to keep in mind, don't get frustrated. It's totally normal. There are so many topics you're going to have this happen uh, where, you know, you need to go back over what you just learned. It didn't really make sense. And that's fine. Um, what's so cool, though, about programming is that there's an entire open source community of people online who can help you solve your problems. So if you run into a problem and you have no idea what's wrong, what you can do is go to stackoverflow.com and, you know, search for your question. And if it's not there, make an account and ask it for yourself and someone will probably answer it, uh, you know, real soon. So true. You, you also brought up a really other great point because me and Candy are just two people. So although, you know, I do help people by mentoring them, I don't look at people's code. So people will inbox me on Instagram and I'm really happy to answer their questions. Oh, I won't open any code. If you send me code to upload to, to somewhere else and send me a link, I'm not opening a code file because somebody could give me a virus. I'm exactly. Yeah, it's a little dangerous for us, but also it's like, it's really time consuming. Granted, I have done, um, Candy and I actually both are private tutors. We have both done private tutoring before and, um, you know, it's something I would consider doing again, but I can't help people with their code. It's not something, uh, this kind of system of helping people, you know, personally helping them with their code, it's not built to scale for two people. So it's not yeah. something I can do. What jobs are there in computer programming? There are actually a lot of different jobs for programmers. So this is pretty exciting. Um, some of the most common titles are software developer, um, mobile developer, web developer, full stack engineer, data scientist, machine learning engineer, database manager. Uh, Candy can offer some other. There are several different types of programmers, such as web developers, game developers, embedded programmers, data analysts. There are also a lot of different jobs related to programming, such as marketing director, project manager, IT recruiter, tech sales, software training. Do I need a computer science degree or coding boot camp? You do not need to get a degree. Um, you can learn everything on your own, create your portfolio on your own, have projects that you have that you've made outside of school without ever going to school. You don't need a degree. I want to learn how to code. How do I get started? This is a great question. Uh, you should actually check out Coding Commander's first Hello World video tutorial. You should start right there. Uh, Candy will go goes over everything that you're going to need to know. And Coding Commander's actually provides all the practical skills that you're going to need to get your first programming job. No degree necessary. So um, definitely check out her videos and you should check out um, those intro videos start there and you want to go in order and learn all those skills. Those web development skills are literally everything you need to get a job. I predominantly code in Java, actually. I really love object-oriented design. Um, I also know C. Um, I, do, I also know Android development and I know a little bit of iOS. I really, really enjoy algorithms and data structures. That's 
probably my favorite area of uh, computer science. I love you know, studying time complexity and um, uh, analysis and analyzing the algorithm, trying to optimize it. Um, but keep in mind, those are also really like math skill kind of computer science, um, uh, I guess you can say areas. It's not for everyone, I get that. Um, I am a math person, I will admit to that. But um, there are so many different areas you could go into. Algorithm developer is, you know, a potential area I might go into. I did just graduate, so I did just finish my master's and in computer science, and I've been looking at some jobs, preparing for the technical interview because that's um, that's a really really important thing. You know, most of the people who were in my program studied computer science most of their lives, and here I was, just random American girl sitting in a class of foreigners of mostly men and um, you know competing with people who've been doing this their whole lives um, and all I had was at the time um, when I first started I'd only been coding for a year so it's really just putting in that effort and um, you know feeling confident and really just playing by the rules you gotta learn all this stuff you gotta not just learn it to understand it but you also have to be able to talk about it because when you go on those interviews they want you to talk while you're coding you have to explain everything you're doing while you're doing it I know it's kind of dark I kind of had to stop take a walk on the beach I've been working really hard lately and I needed a little bit of break but I wanted to say something <laughs> after the interview. So it was a pleasure to have Robin here. She has great insight. Like me, she keeps it real. Me and her, we're gonna tell you what the market's really like, what programming's really like. We're not going to just tell you the same stuff that everybody else is telling you. We're gonna keep it real. And that's why I think it's important because you need to understand that the things that you go through, they're normal, they're natural. Programming is about problem solving. That means most of the time you're confused. You try to solve a problem. It takes time to get from the start to the finish. Also, like she said, if there's something you have trouble with, it's okay to go back over it again. Because once you have the building blocks, your creativity can go anywhere it wants. What you need a solid foundation of is really the intro material. Once you get a solid foundation of that, you can learn as you build projects and then you, your creativity takes over. And then you're looking up how to learn something new because that's what you have to do in order to create your baby. Thank you again for joining me. If you have any questions, comment below, let me know. Make sure you check out Robin's Instagram. And I will link the Hello World video that Robin was talking about, as well as um, a playlist on how to set up your environment. So is everybody ready to rock out some code? Also moving forward, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the tutorials. I'm going to do more stuff like this too. I think there's career information as well as just general advice and tips that people learning programming need to know. In the future, I do plan on having other developers on here with me as well to discuss these kind of topics. If you're watching this and you're a developer, you have to be smart. You have to be like a good developer. I won't let anybody like that's not like good at it be on my show. But if you're a good developer, let me know if you want to be a guest on my show. And you don't have to be like a YouTuber or anything. I'm interested in having intelligent people with good insight and independent thought on my show. That's who I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a sheep. So thank you again for joining me. Happy coding.